Number four, belief in Allah's names and attributes. That is to affirm whatever names and attributes Allah affirmed for himself in his book or in the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a manner befitting him without changing or twisting their wording or meaning that is tahrif without denial of them that is tatil without asserting how they are that is takif and without declaring them to be like the attributes of the creation that is tamseel allah the most high says surah al araf chapter 7 verse 180 walillahi al asmaa ul husna fad'uhu biha wa dharu alladhina yulhiduna fi asma'ihi sayujzawna ma kanu ya'malun and allah has the most excellent and perfect names so call on him by them and abandon the company of those who deviate and commit shirk with regard to them they will be punished for what they used to do then it says in surah ar-rum chapter 30 verse 27 وَلَهُ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ His is the highest and most perfect description in the heavens and the earth and he is the almighty the all wise Then it says in surah ash-shura chapter 42 verse 11 لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ There is nothing like him and he is the all hearing the all seeing with regard to this issue two groups of people have gone astray number 1 the muattila those who deny allah's names and attributes or some of them claiming that to affirm them necessitates making a resemblance between allah the most high and his creation this is a false and futile claim and its futility is shown in a number of ways from them a it would necessitate conclusions that that are futile such as that there is contradiction in speech of allah the one free of all imperfections this is because allah the most high affirmed the names and attributes for himself and also denied that anything is like him so if affirming them necessitated resemblance between allah and his creation then this would mean that there is a contradiction in allah's speech and that some of it negates the rest b If two things have a name or a description that is common to them both it does not necessitate that they are alike so you see that two people share the fact that they are humans and possess hearing and sight and speech but that does not mean that they are alike in their human qualities and in their hearing their sight and their speech furthermore you see that animals have hands and feet and eyes but the fact that this is something common to them does not mean that their hands feet and eyes are alike so when it is clear to you that there is a great difference between created beings in the names or attributes common to them then the difference between the creator and the creation will be far clearer and greater then the second group that has gone astray that is mushabiha those who affirm the names and attributes and also declare allah the most high to be like his creation they claim that this is what is required by and in accordance with the text since allah the most high address the people with that which is understandable to them this claim of theirs is false and futile and its futility is shown in a number of ways from them a that resemblance between allah the most high and his creation is something futile and false disproven by the intellect and the revelation it is further not possible that the texts of the books and this the book and the sunna require and necessitate something that is false and futile b that allah the most high address the people with that which is in essence understandable to them however as for its essential reality and how that which is spoken 
off is then this is knowledge which allah the most high has kept to himself this is the case with regard to allah's self and his attributes so allah has affirmed for himself that he hears and hearing is something understandable to us and is the ability to perceive sounds but as for how the reality of allah the most high's hearing is then this is not known to us this is because hearing differs even amongst created beings so the difference in that regard between the creator and the creation will be far greater also allah the most high has informed us that he ascends that is istawa upon his throne that is arsh so ascension is something that is in essence understandable to us however as for the reality of allah having ascended and how that is then this is something that is not known to us so ascending or mounting a chair is not the same as mounting a difficult and a wild camel so if it is something wherein the creation differ then the difference between the creator and the creation will be far greater iman in allah the most high as we have described it will produce great fruits for the believers from them number 1 that he implements and realizes the tauhid of allah the most high such that he is not attached and devoted to other than him so he does not place hopes in others fear others and does not worship any besides him number 2 completion of one's love for allah the most high and to revere him as is demanded by his perfect names and exalted attributes number 3 to accomplish worship of him by doing whatever he has commanded and avoiding whatever he has forbidden the second principle had three levels and we are doing the second level that is iman Iman had six pillars the first pillar was just completed that is iman in allah and now the second pillar of iman that is his angels the angels that is al malaika are created beings unseen to us and hidden from us they are worshippers of allah the most high and have none of the qualities of lordship or divinity nor any right to be worshipped Allah the most high created them from light and bestowed upon them complete submission to his commands and the power to carry them out Allah the most high says surah al anbiya chapter 21 verse 19 and 20 wa man 'indahu la yastakbiruna an ibadatihi wa la yastahsirun And the angels who are near him are not too proud to worship him, nor do they become weary of worshiping him. They praise and glorify him day and night, and never slacken in that. They are many in numbers, so many that only Allah, the Most High, can enumerate them. it is also established in the two sahihs from the hadith of anas radhiyallahu anhu concerning the night journey and ascension that is the miraj of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the much frequented house that is the al baitul mamur was shown to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that 70000 angels pray in it every day and then when they leave they never return to it but another group arrives every day and this is narrated in bukhari hadith number 429 and muslim hadith number 309 Iman in angel comprises four matters. Number one, to believe in their existence. Number two, to believe specifically in those whose name we know, such as Jibril. As for those whose names are unknown to us, then we have general and comprehensive belief in all of them. Number 3 to believe in whatever has been described to us of their attributes with regards 
to Jibreel, the Prophet وسلم, informed that he saw him in the appearance that he had been created upon, having 600 wings and filling up the horizon. This is narrated in Bukhari, Hadith number 455 and 457. It sometime occurs that an angel changes into the form of a man by the command of Allah. This occurred with Jibreel when Allah the Most High sent him to Maryam. He took the form of a perfect man also when he came to Prophet وسلم, who was sitting with his companions. He came in the form of a man having very white clothes and very black hair. No signs of having travelled were seen upon him and none of the companions knew him. So he sat with the Prophet وسلم, and placed his knees together with his knees and placed his palms upon his thighs. Then he asked the Prophet وسلم, about Islam, Iman, Isan, the last hour and its signs. So the Prophet وسلم, answered him and he departed. Then he وسلم, said, This was Jibreel. He came to you to teach you your religion. This is reported by Muslim. Hadith number one. Likewise, the angels whom Allah sent to Ibrahim and Lut were also in the form of men. Then number four, to believe in the duties that we know of which they carry out by the command of Allah the Most High, such as their glorifying Allah and declaring Him free and far removed from all imperfections and their worshipping Him day and night without wearing or slackening. There are some of them who have particular duties, for example, Jibreel, who was entrusted to convey the revelation from Allah, the Most High, to the prophets and messengers. Mikail, who is entrusted with the duty of looking after rainfall and the growth of plants. Israfil, who is entrusted with the blowing of the horn, that is Asur at the last hour and when the creation are to be resurrected. The angel of death whose duty is to take the souls at the point of death. Malik who is entrusted to guard the hellfire. The angels entrusted with the embryos in the womb. That when the unborn child has attained four months in its mother's womb, then Allah sends an angel to it to write down its provision, its lifespan, its actions, and whether it will be wretched or fortunate. The angels entrusted with recording the deeds of each person, and there are two angels for each person, one on his right and one on his left. The angels whose duty is to question the deceased when he is placed in the grave, two angels come to ask him and ask him about his Lord, his religion, and his Prophet. Iman in the angels produces very great fruit. From them, number one, knowledge of the greatness of Allah, the Most High, His power, His authority, and His dominion, since the greatness of any created thing shows the greatness of the Creator. Number two, thankfulness to Allah, the Most High, for His care and concern for the welfare of mankind, since He entrusted some angels with protecting them and recording their deeds and other actions beneficial to them. And number three, love of the angels angels for their worship of Allah the Most High. There are some deviant folk who deny that the angels are physical beings and claim instead that they are merely an expression referring to the power of good inherent in created beings. This saying is a denial of the book of Allah the Most High. The sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the consensus that is ijma of the Muslims. Allah the Most High says Surah Fatir chapter 35 verse 1 Alhamdulillahi fatir al-samawati wal-ardi ja'il al-malaikati rusulan uli ajnihatim mathna wa thulatha wa rubaa 
all praise and thanks are for Allah, the sole creator, who brought the heavens and the earth into existence, who made the angels messengers with his commands and prohibitions, having wings two, three or four. Then Surah Anfal, Chapter 8, Verse 50. وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذْ يَتَوَفَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَضْرِبُونَ وُجُوهَهُمْ وَأَدْبَارَهُمْ and if you could see, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the angels when they take out the souls of the unbelievers at death, striking their faces and their behinds. Then Surah Al Anam, chapter six, verse ninety-three. <laughs> And if you could see when those who worship others along with Allah are in the agonies of death and the angels are spreading their hands and striking them and saying, deliver up your souls. Then Surah Saba, chapter 34, verse 23. <laughs> Until when the fear is banished from the angels, hearts, they say to one another, What is that your Lord has said? They say the truth and he is the most high, the most great. Then Allah said about the people of paradise, Surah Ar-Rad, chapter 13, verse 23 and 24. And the angels enter upon them from every gate, greeting them. You are in peace and security due to your having patiently obeyed your Lord in the worldly life. So how excellent a final home is paradise instead of the fire. The Prophet ﷺ said, If Allah loves a servant, he calls to Jibreel, Allah loves so and so. So love him. So Jibreel calls out to the inhabitants of the heavens, Allah loves so and so, so love him. So the inhabitants of the heavens love him. Then acceptance of him is placed on the earth. This is narrated in Bukhari, Hadith number 577. The Prophet ﷺ also said, On the day of Jummah, there are angels at every door of the mosque writing down whoever comes first and then the succeeding people in order. So when the Imam sits, then the scrolls are rolled up and they come to hear the reminder narrated by Bukhari, Hadith number 51. These texts clearly prove that the angels are physical beings and not abstract forces as claimed by the deviants. And what is clearly shown in the text is something upon which there is consensus, that is ijma of the Muslims. Then the third pillar of Iman, which the text tells us, that is his books. The books, that is kutub, plural of kitab, meaning that which is written, what is meant here is those books which Allah, the Most High, sent down to his messengers as a mercy to the creation and as guidance for them in order to enable them to attain success and happiness in this world and the hereafter. Iman in the books comprises four matters. Number one, to believe that they were sent down by Allah, the Most High. Number two, to believe in those books whose name we know. From them, the Quran, which was sent down to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. 
the Torah, which was sent down to Musa, that, that is Moses, the Injil, which was sent down to Isa, that is Jesus, and Zabur, which was given to Daud, that is David. As for those which we do not know by name, then we have collective and general belief in all of them. Number three, to affirm whatever reports are established as being contained in them, such as whatever is reported in the Quran and those reports which have not been changed or distorted from the previous books. Number four, to act upon whatever rulings they contain that have not been abrogated and to be pleased with that and to fully submit to it, whether we understand the wisdom behind it or not. All of the books are abrogated by the sublime Quran. Allah the Most High says, Surah Al-Maidah, chapter 5, verse 48. وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَمُهَيْمِنًا عَلَيْهِ فَاحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ and we have sent down the Quran to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it is the truth as confirmation of the book sent down before it, and as a trustworthy witness testifying on the truth contained therein and exposing the falsehood interpolated by men. The meaning of this ayah is that the Quran is a judge upon them. So it is not therefore permissible to act on any ruling contained in the previous books except for that which is proven to be correctly from them and is affirmed and approved by the Quran. Iman in the revealed books produces great fruits. From them, number one, the knowledge that Allah, the Most High, takes care of His servants and send down to each people a book for their guidance. Number two, the knowledge of Allah, the Most High's great wisdom in prescribing for each people those prescribed laws suitable for their condition. As Allah, the Most High, says in Surah Al-Maidah, chapter 5, verse 48, and for each people, we laid down a prescribed law and a detailed way to be followed. And number three, giving thanks to Allah for having blessed us with that. Then the fourth pillar, the messengers, that is a rusul plural of Rasul, meaning one who is sent to convey a message. And what is meant here is those of mankind who had revelation and religious law sent to them and were ordered to convey to people. The first messenger was Nuh and the last of them was Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah the Most High says, Surah An-Nisa chapter 4 verse 163. In we sent revelation to you, O Muhammad, just as we sent revelation to Nuh and the prophets after him. It is reported from Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu in the hadith about the intercession that the Prophet wasallam mentioned that the people will come to Adam to ask him to intercede on their behalf. But he will excuse himself and say to them, go to Nu, for he was the first of the messengers whom Allah sent. This is the narration of Bukhari, hadith number three. Also, Allah the Most High said about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Surah Al Ahzab, chapter thirty-three, verse forty. Ma kana Muhammadun aba ahadim min rijalikum, walakin Rasul Allah, walakin Rasul Allah wa khatam al Nabiin. Muhammad is not the father of any of your men, but he is the messenger of Allah and the last of the prophets. Nor was there any nation left without a messenger sent by Allah the Most High with a special prescribed law for his people or a prophet sent to revive prescribed laws given previously. Allah the Most High says, Surah An-Nahl, chapter 16, verse 36. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ 
we sent a messenger to every nation ordering that they should worship Allah alone and that they should avoid everything worshipped besides Allah. Then Surah Fatir, chapter 35, verse 24. وَإِن مِّنْ أُمَّةٍ إِلَّا خَلَا فِيهَا نَذِيلٍ there was not a previous nation except that Allah sent a warner to them. Then Surah Al-Maidah, Chapter 5, Verse 44. We send down the Torah containing guidance and light and the prophets who submitted themselves to Allah, judged the Jews thereby. The messengers were human and created beings. They had no share at all of lordship, nor any right to a share of worship or divinity. Allah the Most High says about his Prophet wasallam that he was the best of all messengers and the highest standing Amongst them with Allah. Allah the Most High says, Surah Al Araf, Chapter 7, Verse 188. <laughs> إن أنا إلا نذير وبشير لقوم يؤمنون. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it is not within my power to bring benefit to myself, nor to keep away harm, except as Allah wills. And if I knew what the future holds, I could amass a great deal of wealth. And harm would not befall me, but I am just a messenger from Allah sent by Him to warn those who disobey Him of his punishment and to give glad tidings of his reward for those who truly believe in him and are obedient to him. Then Surah Al-Jinn, chapter 72, verse 21 and 22. Say, O Muhammad, وسلم, it is not in my power to bring about harm for you, nor guidance, rather, it is for Allah. Say, O Muhammad, وسلم, none from Allah's creation could save or protect me if I were to disobey Him, nor could I find any refuge except with Him. So they experience whatever the rest of mankind experience with regard to illness, death, the need for food and drink and so on. Allah the Most High says about Ibrahim that he described his Lord the Most High saying Surah Ashura, chapter 26 verse 79 to 81. والذي هو يطعمني ويسقين وإذا مرضت فهو يشفين والذي يميتني ثم يحين he is the one who provides me with food and drink and if I become ill, then it is he who cures me and he is the one who causes me to die when he wills. Then when he wills, he will resurrect me to life. The Prophet ﷺ said, I am just a human like yourselves. I forget just as you forget. So if I forget, then remind me. This is a narration by Muslim, Hadith number 1168. Furthermore, Allah the Most High has described them as being slaves of His. And this is at the height of their honor and is in context of praise of them. So He the Most High says about Nu. Surah Al-Isra, Chapter 17, Verse 3 He was indeed a thankful slave of Allah. He said about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Surah Al-Furqan, Chapter 25, Verse 1 Exalted is he who sent down the criterion, 
that is the Quran, between truth and falsehood in stages to his slave Muhammad so that he should be a warner to men and jinn that they will be punished by Allah if they do not single him out with all worship and keep away from the worship of everything else besides him. He also said about Ibrahim, Ishaq and Yaqub. Surah Saad, chapter 38, verse 45 to 47. And remember, O Muhammad, وسلم, our slaves Ibrahim, Ishaq, and Yaqub, men strong in their worship of Allah and their obedience of Him, and men having understanding of the true religion, and we chose and purified them with the quality of acting solely for the hereafter and calling the people to remembrance of the hereafter and to obedience to Allah. All of them were amongst those who were excellent and were chosen by Allah for obedience to Him and as messengers to the creation. Allah the Most High also says concerning Isa ibn Maryam, Surah Zukhruf, chapter 43, verse 59. Isa is not but a slave of ours whom we blessed with guidance and iman and we made him a sign to the children of Israel. Iman in the messengers comprises four matters. Number one, to believe that they were truly messengers sent by Allah the Most High. So whoever disbelieves in the messengership of one of them has disbelieved in all of them. Allah the Most High says, Surah Ashura, chapter 26, verse 105. <laughs> The people of Nuh denied the messengers. So Allah declared them to be deniers of all the messengers, even though they had no other messenger sent to them besides Nuh. Because of this, the Christians who deny Muhammad and do not follow him are also denying the Messiah, that is Isa ibn Maryam and are not following him either, especially since he gave them the news of the coming of Muhammad wasallam, And there is no meaning to his giving them the news of his coming except that he was to be a messenger for them so that Allah should save them through him from misguidance and guide them to the straight path. Number two, to believe in each of them in particular whose name we know, such as Muhammad, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, Nu, alayhim salam And these five are the ones firmest in their resolve. Ulul Adham, from amongst the messengers, they are mentioned together by Allah, the Most High, in two places in the Quran. Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter 33, verse 7. وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ مِيثَاقَهُمْ وَمِنْكَ وَمِنْ نُوحٍ وَإِبْرَاهِيمَ وَمُوسَى وَعِيسَى بْنِ مَرْيَمْ and we took the covenant from the prophets and from you, O Muhammad وسلم, and from Nuh, Ibrahim, Musa and Isa ibn Maryam. Then Surah Ashura, chapter 42, verse 13. Your Lord prescribed for Nu and that which we reveal to you, O Muhammad, وسلم, and that which he prescribed for Ibrahim. Musa, Isa, that you should establish the religion acting upon what is prescribed and not split into sects with regard to it. As for those whose names we do not know, then we have general and comprehensive belief in all of them. Allah the Most High says, 
سورة غافر شابتر 40 وال 78 ولقد أرسلنا رسلا من قبلك منهم من قصصنا عليك ومنهم من لم نقصص عليك And we send down messengers before you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have narrated to you the stories of some of them and we did not narrate to you the stories of others. Number three, to affirm whatever is narrated authentically from their reports. Number four, to act in accordance with the revealed law of the messenger who was sent to us. And he is the last of them, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was sent to all people. Allah, the Most High, says, Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4, verse 65. فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِّمَّا قَضَيْتَ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا But no, by your Lord, they do not have faith until they make you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, judge in all matters of dispute between them. And they find no resistance in themselves against your decisions and accept them with full submission. Iman in messengers produces very great fruits. From them, number one, knowledge of the mercy of Allah, the Most High, and the great care He has for His servants since He sent messengers to them to guide them to the way of Allah, the Most High, and to make clear to them how they should worship Allah since the human mind alone cannot arrive at knowledge of that. Number two, giving thanks to Allah, the Most High, for this great blessing. Number three, love and respect for the messengers and to give them their due level of praise since they are messengers sent by Allah, the Most High, and because they established worship of Him, conveyed His message and sincerely advised His servants. But the obstinate rejectors denied their messengers, claiming that messengers from Allah the Most High cannot be from mankind. This false claim is mentioned and refuted by Allah the Most High in His saying, Surah Al-Isra, Chapter 17, Verse 94 and 95. وَمَا مَنَعَ النَّاسَ أَن يُؤْمِنُوا إِذْ جَاءَهُمُ الْهُدَىٰ إِلَّا أَن قَالُوا أَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ بَشَرًا رَسُولًا قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَلَائِكَةٌ يَمْشُونَ مُطْمَئِنِّينَ لَنَزَّلْنَا لَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَلَكًا رَسُولًا And what prevented the mushriks from your people, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from believing truly in Allah and in what you brought to them from him? when the clear proof of the truthfulness of what you called them to came to them, except their ignorant saying, has Allah sent a man as a messenger? Say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if there were angels walking about and residing upon the earth, then we would have sent down from the heavens an angel as a messenger. Allah the Most High refutes this claim of theirs since it has to be the case that the messengers are humans since each messenger was sent to the people of the earth who are themselves humans. If the inhabitants of the earth were angels, then Allah would have sent down an angel from the heavens as a messenger to them so that he would be like them. Likewise, Allah the Most High quotes that those who denied the messengers said, Surah Ibrahim, chapter 14, verse 10 and 11. إن أنتم إلا بشر مثلنا تريدون أن تصدونا تريدون أن تصدونا عما كان يعبد آباؤنا فأتونا بسلطان مبين قالت لهم رسلهم إن نحن إلا بشر مثلكم ولكن الله يمن على من يشاء من عباده 
You are just human beings like us in your appearance and you are not angels. All you desire with your saying is to turn us away from the worship of that which our forefathers worshipped. So bring us a clear proof of the truth of what you say. The messengers sent to them said, It is true that we are human beings like you, but Allah favors whomsoever he wills from his creation with prophethood and wisdom. Nor is it for us to bring any proof in accordance with your demands except by Allah's command.